It's a beautiful late summer evening here at West Point. I'm here to open up the 2008 season as I watch the Temple Owls take on the Army Black Knights. First ever bowl appearance. The football has centered on the offense and the new option attack. The Take this opportunity to welcome you to Mikey State. The third regiment of the United States Corps of Cadets. The Oregon. The regimental adjutant, Cadet Captain Andrew Gregory. Florida. The regimental operations officer, Cadet Captain Sean Gahagan from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sir. Good evening, West Point. Ladies and gentlemen, the signal went to deploy their parachutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two good canopies from the high-flying black, gray, and gold of your West Point parachute team. Yeah. The they then leave their patterns are now in final approach at this height. The jumpers prepare to land right on target. On final approach now, jump in tonight's game ball is your team captain and staff leader, Cadet Philip Daniel Kaminsky from Alpharetta, Georgia. A member of company E2, this mark fills 559 skydive. Another perfect skydive. Let's give it up for Phil, ladies and gentlemen. Dale from West Point, New York. He is a member of Company H4, and today Roy is making his 525th jump. Let's give it up for Roy. Bring him in, ladies and gentlemen. Get on the brand new logo. Let's give our jumpers another round of applause for a job well done.
Travis. Temple, 14, Monday night. Touchdown toss. environment this is. The Corps of Cadets marching in the Mikey Stadium ready to root on the Black Knights of the Hudson. It's Army and Temple next. been the home to Army football since 1924. Tonight, a first for this great venue, a football game in the month of August. It's the Temple Owls taking on the Black Knights of Army. Thrilled to have you along. Thrilled to have you along for the ride on this Friday evening. Alongside my partner, Sean King, my name is Eric Collins. And folks, the theme for tonight's game should be everything old is new again. Both Temple and Army going back to the future with their offenses. Simple head coach Al. Only as good as the play of the quarterback. Adam DeMichael returns from injury last year. They're excited about his ability. He's excited to be here. I'm excited to see the East Coast offense. Well, a lot of change, too, for Army. They've had the, uh, the cones of silence around. Welcome back, everyone, to Mikey Stadium here in West Point, New York. An absolutely gorgeous evening for football. The Temple Owls trying to, to build on the improvements they made a year ago, trying to get out of the gate well against the Black Knights of Army. Army doing different things this year than trying to improve on that three one season from a year ago. You know, Eric, two programs who haven't had a lot of recent success, so both of them made changes to their offensive schemes, and both of them are excited about those changes and the change that they can make in their overall record. All right, for the Temple Owls, the head coach now in his third year at Temple, one of the hot names in all of college coaching, Al Golden. He took over a program that didn't win a game in 2006. Check that in 2005. He had a one-win season his first year in 2006, improved to a 4-8 and eight campaign last year, and actually was one of the finalists for the job out in UCLA that eventually went to Rick Neuheisel. Al Golden is highly thought of in the coaching circle. He's definitely one of the up-and-coming coaches in college football, and a big part of that is going to be, is he able to get this Temple program turned around? I think he can do it. He'll be matching wits with Stan Brock, now in his second season with the Army Black Knights. He was 3-9 and nine in his first go-around as a college head coach a year ago. But he says Ego no longer part of the mix. He scrapped the pro-style offense that they had going, and they decided to go to option football, and it looks as if Army will start with the football first here at Mikey Stadium tonight. This is Jeff Watney, the punter for the Temple Owls. He will put toe to leather at the 30-yard line. Back deep, Carlos San Diego for the Army Black Knights. And San Diego will field it at the 8-yard line. He's got the wall set up in front of him. Out across the 25, across the 30, and good starting field position for Army. Possession of three, three snaps, they get themselves a first down. Ball now on the 45. Tony Dace and Patrick Mealy are the two wings in the game right now. They put Mealy in motion. First guy through is Mooney, and he picks up a couple of yards. Second down and eight. And they pitch it out. This is Jamison Carter wants to throw. He punted it. And this ball is going to be down at the 27-yard line. Little 
quick kick, and the ball is down at the 27-yard line. Temple will take over when we come back. Five decades of the Liberty Bowl, presented by AutoZone. 1962, the fourth Liberty Bowl pits the Oregon State Beavers against the Villanova Wildcats. The only score of the game comes when newly minted Heisman Trophy winner, Beavers quarterback Kerry Baker, runs 99 yards down the sideline for a touchdown. It remains the longest touchdown run in bowl history. Oregon State wins 6-0. Welcome back to one of the most gorgeous and unique environments in all of college football. We're at Mikey Stadium here at West Point. Army on defense for the first time this season. The Temple Owls, they will take the field offensively, led by their senior quarterback, Adam DeMichael. DeMichael starts in the shotgun, about four yards behind the center, Alex Derenthal. Four receivers in the game for Temple on first down. DeMichael throws, and that pass is complete. A pickup of 10 yards on first down. Bruce Francis with the grab. And that's a great start for Adam DeMichael. His first throw since the middle of last year when he was injured. Tough route to throw also. That deep out route is not easy to throw. But Five yard field goal attempt should they choose to kick it, but it looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth down and one. Fullback Mooney behind Williams in the backfield. And they give it to Mooney, and the big fella is going to depend upon the mark. It's going to depend upon his forward progress whether or not they got the first down. It's definitely going to be close. It's a great job by that Temple defense of meeting the ball carrier in the hole and not allowing him to get any forward yardage after contact. You know, if you see right here, Colin Mooney actually almost gets to the second level, but Alex Joseph meets him in the hole and completely negates any forward momentum that he has. So that's why it's going to be such a close call. That's wide enough. Army gets the football back over on down. And Eric, that's one of those things that comes from a guy like... So Army, they do not take advantage of the interception. And they have to get the football back. The Michael out of the shotgun with Liverpool next to him. Four receivers in the game for the Owls. The Michael flushed out of the pocket. Stays behind the line of scrimmage now, wants to run for it. And he's pushed out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at the defense. He had a chance for a pick there, Sean. Yeah, you know, they play linebacker because they can't catch. Third down and a bunch. They're going to call it third and 11. Again, four receivers in the game. And DeMichael passes incomplete going out to the sideline, looking for Bruce Francis and the punt team. Seems like the young fellas have stepped up to the plate. It seems like DeMichael's had time to throw the football, has not been able to find any of his receivers open down the field. DeMichael 0 for his last three passes, including an interception. High punt, Carlos San Diego. Fumbles the football, and Temple jumps on top of it. A muffed punt, and the Temple Owls have the football in fantastic field position. Tommy Williams. Welcome back to the first game ever played here at Mikey Stadium in the month of August, season opener for both Temple and Army. Big play. Third down and goal. Ball at the five-yard line for the Owls. Four receivers in the game. Adam DeMichael out of the shotgun wants to throw. Pump fake. Has a man in the open. And it's a touchdown. First one of the season. Bruce Francis. And, and this is an outstanding route. Outstanding throw. Outstanding patience by quarterback Adam DeMichael. Bruce Francis ran what you call a post-corner route. He went to the post, came back to the corner. Use a double move against that inexperienced secondary results in a touchdown. So Al Golden's team, they draw first blood, a 6-0 lead. And they capitalize on the muffed punt return. Pete Brownell takes the extra point. Pete Brownell comes on and kicks the extra point through, and it's now a 7-0 lead for the Owls. Wasn't much of a drive, but it caps off with a touchdown. And if you watch the quarterback right here, Adam DeMichael, you see the pump fake. He pumps on the little post route. Bruce Francis goes back to the corner. Great route. Very difficult route to defend. What I like is you have a quarterback who missed parts of last season from injury. So a lot of times when you 
hurt the part of your upper extremities, you come like a kind of gunshot, we call it. But I don't see that in Adam DeMichael, and it's definitely a positive drive, a positive scoring drive for Temple. Wasn't much. A lot of times when you heard a part of your stadium. Gillette presents kickoff week on ABC Saturday night. You'll see either Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide taking on the Clemson Tigers, or you'll see Michigan State Spartans taking on the Golden Bears of Cal. The Chick-fil-A college kickoff game is part of college kickoff week presented by Gillette on ABC Saturday, August 30th at 80. House and 8 going back to option football. The Brock Bone. On third down, Carson Williams doing what he did a lot of last year, throwing the football downfield, and this pass sails high, and it'll have to bring the punt team on. He was looking for Jamison Carter, but the pass well out of bounds. And I actually like that decision by Carson Williams. You know, third and long is going to be a, a difficult pickup for any offense, and the worst thing you want to do right now is turn the football over. No one's open. Throw the football out of bounds. Punt it. Allow your defense to get a stop and get you the football back. Andrew Reinhardt, senior, coming on to punt the football away. This will be his first punt of 2008. Delano Green is back deep for Temple. He's at the 31-yard line. Good pressure. Reinhardt gets it away. Green from the 29, calls fair catch, and that's where Temple... To, to have a teammate that you really believe in, a guy that's calling that trigger who you feel like can really get the job done, it gives... His teammates so much confidence to have him back. That's you know, part of the excitement this season. You know, for that coaching staff, we have Adam back, and we feel like the sky's the limit as far as what we can do offensively because of him. And we had a chance to talk to the Army coaching staff, and they really are big believers in what the Michael can do. Say that he is a game-changing threat. The Michael wants to throw on second down and has a bunch complete to Bruce Francis. Francis, his second catch of the day. Have to watch a lot of tape. Again, they stay on the ground, and Liverpool, after going left, this time goes right. Get down. And four. DeMichael hits his man out of the backfield. Pass is complete. Marcellus Grigsby has it up for another first down for the Owls, a pickup of six. Grigsby expected to see. We didn't think we'd see this hurry up offense from Temple. First down, Temple. Again, Liverpool running downhill, makes a man miss and gets another first down for the Owls. A pickup of 10 on first down. Jordan Trimble stopped. To take, you cut down some of their rest in between plays, and they're trying to wear this Army defense down. And what Temple is doing is they're going to the line of scrimmage and then bringing in guys at the last minute. Deep back is Joe Jones replacing Liverpool. Behind the fullback, Grigsby. And they give it to Jones and Jones bottled up so he tries the other side Jones inside the 10 down to the 8 pick up of that's not what we're seeing right now it's not we have seen some of it but they've mixed in the three four and five wide receiver formations as well which I think I think it's wonderful you want the defense to be on their heels they have to prepare for a lot of different things second down bullet pass is caught and it's a touchdown the tight end Steve Maneri Second touchdown pass of the quarter for DeMichael. And Temple looked good here. Pass from DeMichael complete. Jake Brownell trying to add the 14th point of the game for the total of the Temple Owls. Split the uprights earlier in this quarter. That one a little bit more dangerous to the left upright, but it's up and in. 
It's now a 14-0 lead for the Owls, a 10-play touchdown drive for Temple. And all this is is a little bison route. It's a little Extra quick point. out route by your tight end. He goes up the field vertically about six yards and turns to his outside shoulder like a little mini hook route. Adam DeMichael puts the ball exactly where it should be so that he can catch the football, protect it, and get up the field. And that's a tough route in man-to-man -man coverage for a linebacker that's coming inside out to cover the tight end. Well, Toots going to benefit them greatly as they get into their conference schedule this year because if you look at this schedule, they have Penn State, they have Michigan, that Miami, Ohio team, even though they lost to Vanderbilt last night, they're still a pretty good club. Central Michigan really good last year. So they got some teams that they're going to have to play down the line where that experience is going to really, you know, showcase itself in the play of those guys because when you've been in the fire before, it's a lot easier to go back in there because you know what to expect. Some knowledgeable people whispering about the Temple Owls being a real factor in the back East this year after finishing 4-4 back play last year, their first full year in the back. San Diego with another return. This time he's swarmed and brought down right when he gets to the 20-yard line. Jordan March in offense. They can't afford to get down by too much because they don't have that quick strike ability anymore. Well, I think the key right now, Temple, I think, is going to be a good football team this year. Army just needs to continue to, to work on this option. It's the first game that they've put it in and make sure that they fine-tune some of the things that aren't going well for them right now because I like what I've seen so far from Army. It seems like it's a lot of different components that, that you can you know, present a defense with, and they'll get better at running it. They will. Well, Army, for the first time today, they have a new fullback into the game. Instead of Colin Moody, it is the sophomore Robert McClary from Jacksonville, Florida, wearing number 33 behind the quarterback, Carson Williams. And they give it to McClary, and McClary picks up four yards on first down. After a quarter of play here at Mikey Stadium, it's a 14-0 lead for the visitors from Philadelphia. Temple Owls, their offense fine-tuned here in their first game, while Army just trying to get something going. They have not had a first down in their last 11 offensive plays. And now the ball is loose in the backfield. It's picked up by Temple. More Keith Brown still on his feet. It's a touchdown. More Keith Brown playing in his first ever college game. Give him six points. And this is one of the, my concerns. When I found out that Carson Williams, who was recruited to run a pro-style offense, was going to have to try and run this option attack. You know, I asked offensive coordinator Tim Walsh, how has his ball security been? Because being a pro-style quarterback, when I played, it's very difficult ball handling-wise to make the adjustment to all the things you have to as far as the option goes. He puts it on the ground. Here at Army, three national championship teams back in the 40s. A big reason why Army has gone back to the option is because of those great teams. There is a, a pride involved with this football team. Guys like Pete Dawkins, Glenn Davis, some of the great names, Doc Blanchard. Fans here at Mikey Stadium are used to good football. And to get back to good football, Stan Brock said, you know what, forget ego. We're not going to try and play like everyone else. We're going to scrap the pro-style offense. Instead, we're going to ride our big fullback, Colin Booney, and we're going to play option football. It's worked here before. Most recently in the mid-80s, Jim Young, the head coach from 1983 to 1990, he had one year of kind of regular football in 83. He said, uh-uh, no more. We're going to play wishbone football. In 1984, they went 8-3-1. The first year running the wishbone under Jim Young. They went to a bowl game. They went to the Cherry Bowl. They had just great success. And Stan Brock and his coaching staff thinking that they could revisit history and do it all over again if they just commit to the option football. That's why they brought this new one. And you see right here, it's one of the things you can't have in special teams is you turn the ball over. You give this offense great field position. Adam DeMichael, first game back, two touchdown passes in the first half. They've been able to capitalize on both turnovers. You see quarterback Carson Palmer loses the football. Temple picks it up. Carson Williams uses the football. He picks it up. Touchdown Temple against the team. If they can run before they have to bring the field goal team on. Third down and 10. 10 ticks remaining here in the half. Williams, a straight drop back. Has a man. Pass is too high, and it's intercepted back to the end zone. 
Dominique Harris had three interceptions a year ago, gets his first of 2008, and it's costly for Carson. Outside of that, Army's actually done a good job, but offensively, they're going to have to find a way to generate some offensive production to give that defense a little rest and to close the gap on the scoreboard. And a total yards, the difference is just 24 yards. Dan Brock's team just slightly behind the Temple Owls. The big difference, three turnovers, a fumble, an interception, and a muffed punt. The Temple will start on offense. Ball is kicked close to the end line. Jamal Schultz on the return, and Schultz with a chance. Schultz, no one in front of him. He's got a chance to go 100 yards. Shelter. Touchdown, Temple. 98 yards. And Shelters just opening up this game for the Temple Owls. And, and you when you I say exposing Eric, he exploded through the hole. And we was off to the races. And we, hold, and we was off to the races. And we got a nice little stride there. You know, we just got finished with the Olympics. We saw some world-class runners. He got a nice try. I want you to watch this explosion when he gets to the point of attack. Right there, boom, makes a move, gets right through it. That's what you want from your returner. Get north and south when the hole opens, explode through it. Now, this is why we practice every day, because right now those hamstrings are getting tight. You're getting tired, but he made it. Temple Owls now with four touchdowns, two by the offense, one by the defense, and now one by the special teams. They lead 28 to nothing over the Army Black Knights. That play took 18 week on ABC Saturday night. You can see either Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide take on the Clemson Tigers or the Michigan State Spartans against the Cal Golden Bears. The